So a while ago, I made a video talking about an article that Screen Rant made talking about how Zordon is the big villain because of the whole child soldiers argument that everyone's made since the dawn of time. And it was a really bad article, really terrible, terrible article. And they've made more. They've made a lot more that are really wacky, really silly, really goofy. And this one has my attention called Power Rangers Animal Zords Expose a Major Lie in the 90s movie. So this one apparently is exposing a major lie from the MMPR movie that everyone loves, the one with Ivan Ooze, everyone loves it. And I am curious to see what they're going to talk about because there's been a bit of Zord talk in the Power Rangers community since the latest issue of the comics with the whole uh, Blue Omega Thunder Zord. And that's probably a video I'm going to make talking about later on this week, eventually. Um, but this one I definitely want to talk about and read because um, it sounds interesting. So, the Power Rangers Zords are fan favorites, but one, sm but one small side story totally changes the way fans will look at these certain classic animals. Ooh, I'm going to get my mind blown. Um, so, let's read it. <laughs> um... One of the most iconic aspects in the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers lore is the existence of Zords, but one issue of the Boom Studios Power Ranger comics contradicts an idea from the franchise's first movie. Alright, so it's the first movie, you know, the movie that it's its own canon, the movie that was made years ago, when the franchise was still in its early stages. Um, are they going to take one line from a movie? and sort of break it down and examine it and pull it pip piece by piece and talk about it. Let's see. All right, this is going to be interesting. Um, essentially, pilotable mechanized kaiju, the Zords have been iconic weapons in the Power Rangers franchise since its very beginning, and almost every Power Rangers Zord has had, has had its share of fans. Parts of the machine's popularity is the fact that every Zord has been treated seriously and has a valid power regardless of the animal that inspires it. That tenet is even raised to a plot point in the fan-favorite 1995 film, The Power Rangers Movie, but in a story in the Power Rangers Mighty Morphin Power Rangers 2016 annual, pokes a major plot hole in that same plot point and undermines the Power Rangers movie in the process. Oh dear lord. What are they going? Oh god, this is this is gonna be something. Not all Zords are created equal. Holy shit! Oh no, we're getting Zord political. And then there's a um scene where Bulk and Skull became Rangers, and it was more of a comedic one shot. So let's see. Uh, Zord and going, Fark is Bulkamir, brash and powerful. You will command the power of the Bakeron. Eugene Squal Skulovich, tough and unusual. You will command the power of the Fe Feverdactyl. Okay, so we got this thing. In the Mining Wolf and Power Rangers 2016 annual story, Unlucky Heroes by Ross Tixovic, I do apologize, and Rob Gullery, the Power Rangers franchise staple. Bulk power, power Ranger franchise staples, Bulk and Skull are made rangers and given their own Zords. A warthog. Look, see these two toe hooks? They look like tusks. And what kind of animal has tusks? A walrus. Didn't I just tell you to stop making up animals? And a very small winged bird that resembles a dodo. While they manage to complete their mission, the reveal of their Zords is an essential play is essentially played for laughs treating their animal inspirations as underwhelming jokes that's the point that's the joke um while the warthog and the flightless bird may not be the most exciting swords this mindset flies in, fl flies in the face of the fan favorite mighty Morphin power rangers movie where the warrior Ducia comforts adam the black ranger over his new zord a frog Okay, so during this, uh, Adam doesn't like he's a frog. Okay, let, let's read their article. Let's read, let's read their argument. I don't want to sort of undermine it. Ducia tells Adam that he and his new frog sword is just as useful as his fellow rangers, reassuring him that he's no lesser than his teammates. But 
That same mindset clearly doesn't apply to the reveal of Bulk and Skull Swords, despite the fact they may end up saving the Rangers, referring to their animals as the Baker Don and the Feather Dactyl. Gee, it's played up for laughs. It's meant to be funny. It's meant to be funny. Mm. Then I get it. <laughs> are they really, are they really fucking taking this one comedic scene and saying, taking it seriously, like they're meant to take it seriously? Please tell me they're not. This is me having a mental breakdown, like, over the Zordon one again. And that same guy is going to come into my comment section again. <laughs> um, okay. Alright, I think I was here. Okay, so they've got Adam. Okay, so we're nearly done. This development essentially rewrites the Power Rangers history, whether intentionally or not. I don't think it's intentional, I think it's a joke. It ultimately implies that Adam really should have been embarrassed by his frog sword. After all, if a more mundane but legitimately dangerous animal like Warthog can be considered a joke, then a little frog can be much more use can't be much more useful. It's meant to be a joke. And the Adam thing is Adam thinking that like a frog is like cause he's a frog, because you know, everyone's like a bear and a ape and a falcon and a wolf, and Adam's a frog. Like, Adam's, like, upset because he's got, like, the soccer, soccer van frog sword. No, that's from Turbo, yeah, the soccer van, but it's that whole concept. Like, he thinks that a frog isn't that cool. And if I remember, I think it was, like, Johnny Youngbosch that wanted to sort of, like, ad-lib that he was upset, up, upset about the frog sword. Like, he sort of, like, wanted to add that into the script, and they sort of ran with it, um, if I remember correctly. I don't know, I, I think that's what Johnny's told, um, but it's meant to be a joke, like, even, like, if you watch the Sentai, we've seen so much ridiculous swords from, like, over the past, like, 50 plus years of Sentai, almost 50 years of Sentai, we've seen some wacky swords, and even though they're wacky, people don't bat an eye, or they don't break it down like this, they're like, oh cool, like, I don't like that Zord design, or that Zord design looks dumb. They don't break it down, just because, like, we had cool dinosaurs and stuff, doesn't mean that we should take, like, this one joke scene in the annual, seriously, and then say it undermines this one scene in the movie that was also sort of played for a joke. Oh my god. Okay, let's keep reading. Zords are undoubtedly the most iconic part of the Power Rangers lore from the Trinosaurus to the Dragon Zord, and even down to the Bacon Don and the Ferrodactyl, Feverdactyl, every Zord has its place, but according to the Boom Studios annual, not all Zords are created equal. Jesus. Really? Does it matter if all Zords are created equal or not? I mean, have you seen some of the Zords we've had in the past couple of years in Power Rangers where some Zords are really useless, some Zords look really dumb, but they're somehow useful? It doesn't matter if they're created equal or not. I mean, Bulk and Skull, they, it's a comedic one-shot. It's meant to play up for laughs. I don't think they should be taking it that seriously. <laughs> and I think they missed the point of the annual. Maybe they watched my video, maybe they watched my video, Estee's video, or someone's video, where Bulk and Skull became Rangers, or they flicked through it and they took it too seriously, like, I don't think that one shot should be taken that seriously. And then, I guess they were watching that 20, they were thinking of, like, the 1995 movie. Like, jeez, like, all Zords not created equal, are they fucking serious? I definitely want to start, like, breaking down more articles like this and talking about them, because they're so wacky, they're so ridiculous, like, they're so silly, and nothing against, like, Screen Rant or the people who write this art these articles, I'm sure they're nice people, and I don't mean to gatekeep or put them down, but then, <laughs> these articles aren't the best. And I feel like they just need to, they're thinking too too much into it, to be honest. And I'm sorry if I come off as a jerk or I'm gatekeeping and stuff like that, but this article is not the best, and I feel like, behold, not all Zords are created equal. It's a dumb argument. And like I said, 
It's meant to be a dumb comedic scene because Bulk and Skull are comedic. Like, you're not meant to take this one shot seriously, even having the Zord series. I mean, look at their suits. You've got Bulk's, like, gut hanging out. Um, and then you've got Skull's pants that are not being kept up because of the belt. <laughs> like, how, how more seriously can you take that? Like, it's meant to be played up for laughs. And that whole one shot is meant to play up for laughs as well. If you've read it. It's like not meant to be serious, but hey, it is what it is. I think I'm going to end this video here. I feel like I've rambled on enough. <laughs> um, hopefully people enjoy this video of me talking about the Screen Rant article and stuff like that. Maybe I'll do more. If they do stuff related to the comics, I definitely want to nitpick their arguments when it comes to the comics. Um, that'd be a lot of fun. Uh, sort of, because I am the Power Rangers comic guy, so I definitely want to hear their opinion and stuff like that. On the recent comics, like, no, no bad blood against Sam. I'm not stepping on anyone's toes. I just want to hear their opinion and sort of break it down and dissect it in my own videos. Because, you know, <laughs> I, uh, yeah. But, um, anyway, guys, I think I'm going to bring this video to a close. It's been very unscripted, very unplanned, and we'll see how it goes. So, anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll see you guys later. Peace out, take care, bye.